Good day, everyone. For the past few days, we have been journeying through the book of First John. I can't get that word right today. But the idea here is that we have been looking at First John and what it is John is saying to us in today's world. John writes in the first century. But the issues and things he writes about then are still pertinent today. Remember, the word of God, as Hebrews reminds us, is active and powerful. It is alive and it speaks into our hearts. And so John has been reminding us that if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father. The advocate has paid for our sins. He then tells us if we know him, to know him intimately, we keep his commandments. But then as he keeps walking to us through the idea of keeping his commandments, we get to the next verse, verse 4, and we almost just slide over it because it sounds so familiar, almost like verse 3. But John is speaking to us about something even more important. The first in verse 3 is to know him. If you know him, you will keep his commandments. But then in verse 4, he challenges us. He speaks to our hearts and our minds to say, what are you doing? Here's what he says in verse 4. He says this, the one who says, I have come to know him, that is Jesus, and does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. <laughs> With tease young people, sometimes it says, ah, the truth is not in you. But what is John challenging us to here? He's challenging each of us today to spiritual integrity. Oh my, yes, spiritual integrity. We need spiritual integrity. Spiritual integrity is living the life that we talk about. A thousand years ago, when I sang in youth choir, and we'd go traveling around, and you know, people would applaud us and speak into us and tell us how good we were and all that. Our pastors would call us aside and just say, remember, young people, you need to live the life you sing about. Live the life you sing about. We as Christians have that need to understand that same principle, that we are to live the life that we profess. What does John say again? He says, those who say that they know him and don't keep his commandments are liars. And the truth is not in them. Now, whoa, John, what are you saying to us here? He's saying, well, first of all, that you are pseudo, that you're false. You wear two faces. You say this, you do this. You believe this, but you act this way. Out of your mouth should come blessings and honor, but out of your mouth instead comes curses and hurts. Are you being false? Are you being, as Paul would say, dicycles? Or James would say that actually, a person of two minds, two hearts. He is calling us to spiritual integrity. Then he says, if we're lying and the truth is not in us, what truth? Althria. What's the idea there? That you are not practicing what you have said you believe, number one. Number two, if you're living a lie, walking in a lie, if you're being false, then that he's also saying you're not keeping the commandments of Christ. If you're not keeping the commandments of Christ, after you say you know him, then is the truth of Christ in you, is the, is the person of Christ in you. Spiritual integrity means that we walk in the life that the Father has called us to be, the persons that he's called us to be. John in the gospel would say, walk in the light. Why? Because in him there's light and no darkness at all. If you and I are called to walk in the light then, why do we walk in the darkness? Because the darkness is lie. It is false. John says, if you come to know him, if you have begun to understand and know who he is, live a life of truth. Let your actions, let your words, let your beliefs, the things you do, match the things that you say. Think in your own life. None of us like folk who are false, who are disingenuous, who are hypocrites. We like to shy away from them. 
Why? Because we don't trust them. Well, if I'm not walking in spiritual integrity, then how can people trust me? How can people trust me when they ask me to pray for them? When they ask me to give you, give a, a verse? Why? Because our spiritual integrity, the lives that we live before men and women, are the lives that people see, hear, and know. There's an old line, and it's a true line, that says this, people see more Bibles than they read. People see more Christians than they experience. Why? Because if you and I are not living the life that the Father's called us to live, we're not living in spiritual integrity. And that is what John is calling us to, to not be false, to not be a liar, but to let the truth of God flow through us. Back to verse 3. Keep his commandments. Walk with him. Let him be the person in your life that you want him to be. Because that is our relationship as we know him. Because again, he says that in his verse. Know him. Knowing him is the idea of intimately having knowledge of Christ. It's an intimacy that we don't have to be afraid of because it's an intimacy that continually grows in our lives that we begin to understand him, know him, know the love that he has for us, the grace that he gives us. That calls for decisions in our life. Bonhoeffer would probably say many of us live by cheap grace. Cheap grace is grace without discipleship. Cheap grace is grace without the cross. Cheap grace is living the, by our own rules and expecting God to bless it. Whereas actual grace is living by the word of the Father, letting the Father speak into us. It is discipleship in our lives. And that's what John is after. If we are walking with Christ, then we should be good disciples, hearing, knowing, doing his word, letting his word be in us. Because as his word is in us, we then understand and know him more. We walk with him in a closer relationship. John is writing that these folks hear, see, know, and be the people of God. By understanding him and letting him speak into their hearts, their minds, and their souls. Hosea chapter 4, verses 1, 2, 3. God is angry with Israel because sin abounds in the land. The priests are crooked. The people are crooked. They're doing all different types of things that God does not want them to, to do. But they're bearing his name because they're not walking in spiritual integrity. Think in your own life. Don't go blaming, but just look at your own life in those places where you have not walked in spiritual integrity. John is calling us to spiritual integrity. Why? Because the world around us needs spiritual integrity. The world around us needs spiritual integrity economically. They need it politically. They need it socially. They need it culturally. They need it psychologically. They even need it spiritually. That we walk in spiritual integrity. That the men and women around us know that we belong to the Father who is constantly speaking through us as we live his truth, as reality is in our lives. That people around us, the Bible they see, the Christian they see, that we are believable because we walk in such spiritual integrity. Father, thank you for calling us to spiritual integrity, that, Lord, we may walk with you. Lord, we pray with David, examine me, purge me with hyssop, see if there's any hurtful way in me, and lead us in the correct way, your way of righteousness. Help us, Father, to be men and women of spiritual integrity. In your name, Lord, we pray. Amen. Be blessed today, my dear friends.